This morning in our series, Issues That Matter, we are focusing on the opioid crisis, its impact on Americans across the country, and how to deal with this epidemic. According to the CDC, almost 400,000 Americans died from prescription and illicit opioid overdoses between 1999 and 2017. In 2017, more than 2.1 million Americans were addicted to opioids. Yesterday, a $260 million settlement was reached between two counties in Ohio and four drug companies. Lawsuits brought by more than 2,600 cities, counties, and Native American tribes nationwide are still being resolved. A recent report shows the largest drug companies distri distributed 76 billion, with a B, pain pills at the height of the nationwide epidemic. Well, this Saturday, the Drug Enforcement Administration is hosting a National Prescription Drug Take Back Day. That's where you can turn in your unused and unwanted medications. No questions asked. Acting DEA Administrator Utum Dillon is here to discuss the initiative. Uh, good morning. And also, before we get to that, uh, I do want to get uh, you on the record regarding this Inspector General report that came out last month. Now, I know you're new to the DTA, new, new to the DEA are not responsible to the, uh, for what is being criticized in this report, but it does say that regarding the opioid epidemic, the DEA was, quote, slow to respond. And how slow? Well, as overdoses were increasing, the quota that the DEA allowed to be prescribed and distributed went up 400 percent. So given those numbers, does the DEA share some blame for this epidemic? Well, the DEA welcomes the findings of the inspector general, and it's important to realize that that report uh, covers a period of time from fiscal year 2010 to fiscal year 2017. Over the last few years, the DEA has made many improvements. Let me just give you a couple of examples. Um, DEA sets the quotas for manufacturers of these addictive uh, opioids. Since 2016, we have reduced the quota by 47%. Our 2020 quota will reduce it by 53%. So that means more than half of the drugs will no longer be available for, for uh, uh, distribution illegally. Would you call that a correction? Well, I would, it would be, I think it's fair to say that is a, a, a correction based upon uh, our understanding of what's needed in the uh, medical and research communities. So DEA works very hard to determine every year the correct amount of these addictive opioids that need to be manufactured for all medical and research purposes. And based upon our research, uh, these reductions are appropriate. Also, remember, we have to ensure that we don't have a shortage of these drugs. So it's important to find that correct balance. And we believe with our 2020 quotas, we found that balance. What are you hoping to accomplish with National Prescription Drug Buyback Day? Well, a National Prescription Drug Take Back Day is an opportunity for Americans to clean out their medicine cabinets of unwanted, unused, and expired prescription medications and bring them to a collection location near them. Our goal is always the same every year. We discovered that people become addicted to the medications in their homes, in their medicine cabinets. Friends and families, friends and family members will take these and that will begin the cycle of, of drug addiction and abuse. We find that people bring those in, those drugs aren't available for people to become addicted to. So. And you also want to stress, do not flush them down the toilet. Cause do not flush say, them down the toilet. I'll just flush it down the toilet. I don't need to go and, and, and turn these in. That's bad for the environment. Yeah. We, remember, everything we collect, we destroy in EPA-approved incinerators. So it's environmentally, they're destroyed in an environmentally friendly way. I was interested in, to, to read that vape pens are part of what you're accepting as this give back, no questions asked. Absolutely. For the first time ever, we're going to be accepting vaping products and vaping devices. So people who are uncertain about a product they may have, feel free to bring it to a take back location near them. This Why did you add them to the list, Mr. Dillon? Well, because things have, it's, it's clear that people have concerns about these. Uh, there's been obviously reports of, of people actually dying from using certain vaping products. Mm -hmm. So if you have a vaping product, uh, you have one or a family member has one and you're uncertain about its safety and its quality, feel free to bring it into a collection location this Saturday. How else is the DEA responding to the, the vaping uh, epidemic, the epidemic of illnesses? Well, the DEA is working with the FDA criminal investigators to uh, find individuals and companies who are manufacturing uh, vaping products that are dangerous. Uh, one of the things that we've noticed at the Drug Enforcement Administration is that uh, drug trafficking organizations, the kind of organizations that, that distribute marijuana, cocaine, heroin, fentanyl and the like, are also getting involved in vaping products. And so we're attacking the problem that way also. 
And so many people get hooked on, on, on opioids from their doctors. What's being done to make sure that doctors are doing the right thing? Well, over the last year or so, DEA has been working with medical practitioners, doctors and pharmacists and the like to educate them about overprescribing. Nice. And we've had great progress. We've actually seen prescription rates for these addictive opioids go down by almost 30% in the last year or so. How do you educate them? How do you it's educate doctors? Well, Actually, it's interesting. Doctors uh, aren't always, it, through medical school, they don't learn about the issues of overprescribing and that sort of thing. And so one of the things we teach them is that oftentimes the medications, and we work with Health and Human Services also on this, oftentimes the amount of medications that they're prescribing are unnecessary. Uh, people don't need 30 days worth of opioids. Oftentimes three, four, five, six, seven days will be sufficient. That alone has caused a 30% decrease. And how much of you drugs have you collected on National uh, Take Back Day? Since that since 2010, yeah. since it first began, and we do it twice a year in April and October, we've collected almost 6,000 tons, tons of prescription wow. medications. Wow, so it is working. Thank you very much, Utim Dillon, for Thank taking you. the time today. National Prescription Drug Take Back Day is this Saturday, October 26. You can go to our website, cbsthismorning.com, to find out where you can drop off your unused or expired prescriptions. And again, no questions asked.